All right. I think we can start. Welcome everyone to this week autonomy talks. This week is a great pleasure to have with us Professor Giacomo Como, who is a professor at the Department of Mathematical Sciences at the Polytechnic of Torino in Italy, and also a senior lecturer at the Automatic Control Department of uh, Lund University in Sweden. So something about Giacomo, he received his Bachelor of Science and Master of Science and PhD degrees, uh, all in applied mathematics from the Polytechnic of Torino. He then uh, moved to US where he was first a visiting assistant in research at Yale University and then subsequently a postdoctoral associate at the Leeds uh, lab at uh, MIT, actually working among others with Emilio. Um, and the, as you can see in his bio, is uh, serving as uh, associate editor uh, for, for very important journals in the field, and also is the recipient of the George Axelby Outstanding Paper Award. Um, his research interests are in general in dynamics, information and control in network systems with application to cyber physical systems, infrastructure networks, and social and economic networks. And today's talk in particular will focus on the role of uh, dynamic pricing and user preferences, uh, heterogeneities in dynamic traffic flow networks. Of course, this touches a lot of the topics we're interested into in the Autonomy Talks community, and therefore we are very excited to hear the talk. So without further ado, Giacomo, go ahead, the stage is yours. Thank you, Joelle. Thank you for the uh, nice introduction and for the invitation. It's a pleasure to give uh, this seminar. Um, also meeting Emilio after a long time. So um, <clears throat> yes, th so this talk is going to be about um, uh, about um, recent work that is in a line of work that I have been doing for a few years now and dates back to when I was a postdoc also with Emilio at MIT in the good old days. Anyway, the, the, um, it is about the uh, control of uh, dynamic flows in, uh, in infrastructure networks. And uh, in particular, we are talking here about traffic flows. You know that uh, transportation networks and more general infrastructure networks are working close to their capacity limits because of uh, high loads. And they tend to be prone to disruptions uh, that could be caused not only by big uh, shocks, but also by small shocks that get propagated in the network because of the inner dynamics. So these networks tend to be vulnerable. And um, <clears throat> that's obviously a big quest for um, uh, designing controls that uh, in spite of the complexity of the problem are uh, scalable, uh, effective, and uh, when I mean by effective, I mean that they are both uh, efficient, efficient and resilient. So they are able to uh, absorb the, the, the shocks and uh, to uh, let the system reconfigure in, a, in, an autonomous, in an autonomous way. Now, in this line of research that I've been involved with uh, for a few years, we typically uh, try to um, build on the problem structure in order to um, handle the complexity of the problem. And the complexity of the problem stems from the fact, for example, that the, the system is of large scale. It involves different layers. There's the, the physics of the traffic flow. There's the cyber layer, the, the information level where the uh, communication among the different units, it's always more and more present. And then uh, it involves also human decision makers, the, the, the drivers, for instance, which have their own uh, behaviors, which impact the system. So typically, <coughs> this uh, some of the works that I want to show, they um, try to uh, assess some fundamental limitations of this um, problems, think bounds that are control independent, and then to build on the problem structure to design some um, uh, controls which achieve the, the proposed goals. And this problem structure, you will see it uh, related to monotone system convexity, contraction theory, and other, um, uh, and other nice uh, tools that uh, are available 
in this field. So today uh, I want to talk about uh, two things mainly, which is uh, two recent pieces of work, one on dynamic pricing in multi-scale uh, traffic networks and the other one on the impact of heterogeneous preferences, what changes when the, the, the drivers uh, value the, 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 uh, the delay differently from one another. So that's my uh, outline. I'd like to start with a brief review of uh, start of classical results, just to set up the stage and then to see um, what we, uh, how we expand on them. And then I'll deal with the two topics. I was planning also to have a third topic, but I really don't think I am fast enough to make it. So the last one is just a, it's just, a, an item in the outline that I will not make it probably. All right, so <clears throat> what's a classic, a very classical theory of uh, traffic networks? You think uh, for a second for it with uh, you have a graph, the, the, the roads are the links and the nodes are the junctions or the interfaces between different roads. And um, you look from a static perspective, you think of uh, flows from, for example, for a single origin to a single destination, this can be generalized. And you may assume that uh, the, um, the physics of the single link is captured by a, a delay function, which is something like the one plotted on the top right. It's gonna be an increasing function, also convex typically, which um, tells you how what is the travel time on that link when there is that much flow. Now, if you look at the problem from a centralized optimization perspective, that you end up with a convex optimization problem. You have a separable function. You want to minimize the total travel time. And uh, this ends up being convex in this, in this setting. And you have linear constraints, which is conservation of mass, basically. However, um, the, um, <clears throat> this, the, 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 the problem that, um, uh, that, that is more relevant often is, uh, and it captures the fact that there are uh, different decision makers, like the drivers, is this uh, notion of user equilibrium, which again is very classical, uh, as opposed to the system optimal, you don't you cannot assume that there is a centralized decision maker uh, deciding the routing for everyone, but uh, imagine that every driver is trying to minimize his own experience delay and the road choice is based on this minimization. Then there is a game theoretic notion of equilibrium, which ends up being uh, captured by this word drop definition. The delay on every use route is less than or equal to the delay on any other route. And uh, there is a beautiful theory stemming from the 50s. Essentially, this ends up also in a convex optimization problem just with a different uh, objective function. And uh, this is well known as the user equilibrium uh, traffic problem. Now, that's a lot of literature on that, also more recent, especially looking at the price of anarchy, how to estimate the inefficiency of this user equilibrium. And uh, there's also something even much more old that is an old idea that has been revisited several times, that is how to uh, reduce this price of anarchy, or to minimize this price of anarchy through interventions. And some of the interventions are not the only ones, but the most uh, studied interventions, I would say, are based on tolls. There is a set of tolls called marginal cost tolls. Uh, which date back to 100 years ago. Uh, Pigou was an economist back then. And uh, essentially, they allow, in economics term, to internalize the negative externality, and they allow to reduce the price of anarchy to one. So now it's a beautiful theory, very elegant. Uh, it lacks um, a little bit of the features that um, allow one to address the problems that are uh, relevant uh, right now in part because the um, first of all it's a static theory second it relies on centralized notions and uh, it assumes that uh, drivers it has a lot of assumptions including that the users the drivers have homogeneous preference 
And um, well, I did, will not talk about that, but this um, it assumes uh, also well, it, it, it induces that the behavior is non monotone with respect to interventions. So I mention only uh, interventions at the level of tolls, but uh, the last item that probably will not make it to discuss it's another kind of interventions, you know, uh, which could be. Uh, like infrastructure changes that uh, could also be dealt with. Okay, so let me uh, start with the first uh, part of it. And this first part of my um, talk would be to look at traffic dynamics and to see how one could design distributed influence mechanism, distributed dynamic pricing, it will result in, um, they try to deal with uh, both the um, <clears throat> uh, to deal with the um, uh, to deal with the, the traffic in a in a dynamic way and um, possibly in a scalable way. So the model that I'm going to present relies on uh, this very basic uh, observation that. Um, Drivers might take routing decisions based on two kinds of information, real-time information, which is what they observe locally, but also global information that uh, could be assessed maybe uh, less frequently through routing apps, for example. Now, <clears throat> here is the, uh, the, the dynamic model that I uh, propose. The so the, 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 the graph or multi graph, if you want to allow for parallel links, represent again the, the network. Uh, think again for the single origin destination. This can be generalized, but just to fix the ideas for now. And then um, uh, let me introduce uh, a few variables. So the, the y variable is the, 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 the flow on the link, which is was already in the static. Uh, formulation, but now let's uh, we need to introduce some dynamics, so we need another physical. Uh, the uh, another physical quantity that is the the traffic density not volume sorry that's a typo on the on the uh, on the link itself. And uh, we're going to assume that flow and uh, volume and then sorry and density are related by some functional dependence. The flow is some increasing function of the density, which is sublinear in the sense that um, at some point there is a maximum flow that cannot be um, uh, cannot be. Um, Violated, and this is uh, this is the capacity of the link. Um, to that, uh, we also associate some um, latency, and this latency is sort of proportional, at least, to the inverse velocity, uh, which is the ratio between density and, and flow. So, call this the, the the total latency. So, this two i, it's the it's the latency on on link i. That depends on the flow and hence on the on the density. There are also some variables here. The, the lambdas they represent exogenous inflows. So what what is the loads on the network that are coming from outside the network? Now, uh, so what I'm going to present it's a model uh, with two levels of the of um, of dynamics. One that represent the physical part, and another one that represent the um, path preferences, so the, the, the decision level. And this is a model we first introduced actually in a, in a paper with Emilio back then, and then um, what I'm going to uh, back uh, a few years ago. So uh, this uh, there's going to be two levels, hence multi-scale, the, 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 um, the physical level, it's the equations that I'm showing here. It's a first order system, if you wish, where the where we are simply representing the um, <clears throat> conserva dynamic conservation of mass on the links, the total link, the total flow, the, 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 um, the total inflow in a network, in a, in a link is the um, difference between the sorry the total inflow in a network is the possibly the exogenous inflow plus the inflow from um, upstream links 
And uh, there's a negative term that is the total outflow from that link. Now look that I include this RIJ. This RIJ, this is a routing matrix. It's a matrix whose rows sum up to one or less than one if there is some outflow. And that represent essentially RIJ is the fraction of flow from node from link I that is routed directly to uh, link J. Okay, now this routing matrix uh, in many models, it's considered as a constant, but here I want to take it um, dynamically because that's uh, where the decisions of the drivers, um, that's affected by the decision of the drivers because the routing depends on how many drivers are gonna choose one uh, path from their origin to destination as opposed to another one. So I'm now introducing other uh, variables and uh, that I'm representing with this Z and this Z represent a fraction of drivers or total quantity of drivers choosing a certain route as opposed to another one. Think of this as a big vector. And um, in the single origin, single destination, it would tell you, uh, think of it for all the paths from that origin to that destination, the, the drivers from that origin to that destination would choose uh, one of these paths and that will result in the aggregate on certain fractions on the different paths. Now, <clears throat> from this um, Z vector, we can uh, derive what the routing matrix is. It's just a matter of um, uh, projecting the induced flows, which I represented by uh, YZ on the links, and then um, taking the fractions of the induced flows that get routed from one node to, from one link to another. Okay, the, the, <clears throat> it's not uh, particularly difficult, but this is just to say that the, the routing depends on this decision, uh, decision variables, the uh, preferences. And in turn, these decision variables are changing constantly uh, because people might um, be traveling and checking Google Maps, Waze, or their favorite routing app, get online uh, information about the congestion state of the network and um, update their uh, path. That is the idea. And on top of that, uh, there is one more piece of uh, information that is the uh, toll. So let's assume that besides the delay, the, the, there are also tolls that are charged on the different links, possibly not on all of them. But imagine that there is uh, a dynamic mechanism that uh, allows a, a system planner to charge tolls and these are dynamic. So that uh, the perceived cost on a link I, it's the sum of the travel time on that link and the toll. Okay, imagine that units are rescaled in such a way that this is the actual um, perceived cost. And here it's where the uh, main assumption um, that I'm gonna relax later is hidden. Uh, it's not such a big problem to sum up time and money if you if you make this rescaling, but of course the rescaling would be depend uh, on the uh, on the uh, on the person whom you are asking. So here uh, hidden here it's an assumption of homogeneity. Everyone values time versus money at the same level, but I will relax it in the second part of the talk. Now. Uh, Based on the measured delay, the measured travel time and the current tolls, the um, drivers assume that they can change their decision and uh, they can change it in continuous time according to this model. And here is a very basic model for this change. It's, it's called the logic dynamics. You might have encountered it in many other uh, places. So essentially it's a soft max, it's a soft mean actually. Uh, sort of uh, decision where um, <clears throat> for large values of this parameter beta, which is an inverse of noise, so for small noise, the drivers would revise their, um, their uh, path preference by choosing a minimal perceived cost path. For uh, large but finite beta, 
this would mean that uh, it would allow to consider noise, meaning that not only minimal cost paths would be chosen, but with little frequency also other paths would be explored, although with much, much smaller frequency, depending on how uh, less efficient they are. Now, uh, if we couple these two dynamics, we end up with uh, a system like that. There is uh, on the top feedback loop, um, <coughs> There is a decision layer, and here it's the it's where the evolution of these preferences uh, is um, is described. The uh, the preferences, this is path preferences. Well, they depend on two factors. One is the uh, actual uh, congestion, as measured by the travel times, that depend on the current congestion level and possibly this uh, tolls that we are adding as a, a central planner decision uh, variable. And down there is the physical system, which is where the variable X, the actual density on the links evolve. And that was this first order system where based on conservation of mass. Now there's a double, uh, there, there is a feedback here loop because the, of course, the decision making changes the routing and the routing impacts the physics of the problem. And the physics through the total travel times that are measured uh, on, the, on the roads, it's gonna impact the, um, the decisions because people might want to change route if this is, this is uh, signal as more congested. The goal here in this, in this exercise is to, uh, um, can we design some dynamic toll mechanism that um, allows to achieve optimality in some way? And can we do that in a scalable and robust uh, way? Now, the, um, as I said, this, this dynamics, we first studied uh, along with, um, uh, with uh, Ketan and, uh, and Emilio and others uh, almost 10 years ago. And um, we studied it with no tolls. And this, our result was that this multi-scale system globally converges, is globally syntactically stable around the water of equilibrium, the user equilibrium which, um, as we said uh, earlier, it's, it's the, 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 the wardrobe notion, which is, suffers from the price of anarchy problem. The, the, the latest result that we had more recently with a, with a postdoc of mine is this, that if you add dynamic pricing policies that are uh, completely decentralized, meaning that on every link you charge a toll that is an increasing function of the, um, the flow on that link or of the congestion on that link, then uh, you can globally stabilize the, the, the system around an induced user equilibrium. And the third piece of the story is that if you choose a particular choice of this cost, that is a dynamic version of this PIGU marginal cost, uh, tolls. So if you uh, use this PIGU marginal cost tolls, not by pre-computing what the desired equilibrium would be and then charging constant tolls. But if you use them in feedback, and that would be a completely local feedback, then uh, you're able to globally stabilize the multi-scale dynamics around the social optimum. So you can reduce the price of anarchy to one, and you can do so in a fully decentralized way. Uh, so without any need for knowing even the network structure at the local decision. So you have this, um, <clears throat> um, you have this uh, local controllers that determine the price on a road and they just have to measure what the congestion is on that road. That means that uh, brings a lot of uh, robustness to that because if something happens, they would still, um, if, if the conditions change, they would allow the system to reconfigure without having to uh, share any centralized information. I will not discuss much about the proof, but um, it's a singular perturbation uh, argument in both papers. And um, it builds on the fact that on the decision layer, which is at a slower time scale under the assumption, the um, 
the dynamics is uh, allows for a certain Lyapunov function that it's a potential function related to the uh, potential of the uh, of the game, and this potential was that uh, convex was related to the convex function that I was showing you in the beginning, along with uh, an entropy part. Now, um, what is interesting is that um, the the the, uh, the the result is proved in the uh, for time scales that are sufficiently separated, but. Uh, by all means, if you simulate the system, you, you observe that convergence is regardless of this time scale separation. And uh, what you can do is that also you could compare uh, two different systems, two different kinds of tolls. Um, static tolls that you could pre-compute, imagine that you know the boundary conditions and you can do and you assume that they remain static along all time. You could pre-compute them and uh, charge the stalls. Or you could compare that with this dynamic tolls. I mean, if you, uh, even if the, the system is uh, static and you knew everything in advance, uh, what is interesting is that the performance is uh, better for this feedback tolls uh, as opposed to the constant ones. And the other interesting thing that you could observe from simulations is that um, what happens if you include delays. So I was talking about, uh, yeah, I should use the word delay in two different meanings. So I was talking about travel times, the, the previous ones. And now I'm talking about information delays. So assume that uh, the, the tolls are charged with, um, still with the local uh, feedback, but this feedback includes delays which of course practically are, are going to be relevant, then uh, what you can observe is that there's sort of a phase transition. As long as you have your delays below a certain threshold, the system still converges with the little oscillations that get attenuated, but then there's a threshold beyond which the system starts to oscillate. And you could observe these oscillations, although we have no, uh, we haven't, been able to prove uh, formally the this oscillations. Now let me jump to the second part, and uh, the second part I want to relax on that assumption that um, everyone uh, has the same objective, which was underlined in the theory uh, so far. So uh, what happens, what can you think of? Uh, how can you include heterogeneities in this, what are called routing games? Let's think of the static setting for a second. Let's go back to the original static uh, problem. I uh, think that there are uh, multiple populations instead of just one. And this multiple population might have uh, different origin and destination and different sizes and throughputs from the, the origin to the destination. And uh, for every population, you should keep track of what is the fraction of drivers from that population choosing one particular route uh, against the others. Of course, you can project on the populations and on the paths and see this is going to induce a certain link uh, flow. And you could evaluate on this link flow some uh, costs that could be related to the travel time. The main difference here is that you might assume that different uh, populations perceive different costs depending on the, on the congestion level on the different links. So you see this uh, travel times, now you might think that they depend on the, uh, on the population. How should you think about that? Uh, it could be that the travel time itself depends on the on the population, or it could be that it's just the, the perceived cost or the same, it's the same travel time that it's perceived different and weighted differently by the different populations. And, um, <clears throat> or, uh, and, okay, but this is more, um, uh, well, you could argue that also you might have different information about the current congestion. 
And so given the same current congestion, you get different information. And so you make your decision in different way, perceiving the cost in a different way. All this could be captured by this uh, local cost, TIP. Those, that would be the, the cost for population P using link I. And then of course, when you look at the whole uh, route, your cost, if you're population P, is gonna be the sum of all the costs that you encounter along the links. So that's um, that's a heterogeneous routing game. It's um, it also has some theory that uh, it's quite classical, uh, much less than the previous one. What is it that it's known um, from classical theory? Uh, first, you can define the wardrobe equilibrium or a user equilibrium. I'm using the two names uh, as synonyms. So it's it's a uh, it's a uh, uh, it's a distribution of flows such that the if some user is using uh, a particular um, a particular route in a certain population, then um, that perceived cost on that route should be less than or equal to the perceived cost on any other available route to that population. And um, the, the, the main novelty is that in general, those games uh, don't allow for this nice convex uh, potential that was also where you could uh, design the, the, the tolls. So actually you could prove that a potential exists um, only under certain conditions and those conditions essentially, uh, you see them uh, stated here, uh, it's, they basically uh, allow for to treat the case where the cost differ by constants. If the cost differ by uh, constants, then um, then the the, the, uh, the previous theory could be uh, used in some in some other way. But if uh, they differ more substantially, not by constants, then um, the theory is uh, quite different. Still, existence of equilibria is is well known. But what changes is that, for example, you might get a non-unique wardrobe equilibrium. When you, when you have a homogeneous population, the, the wardrobe equilibrium is typically unique, or it's unique whenever you have increasing cost, uh, increasing cost functions. But if you have um, heterogeneous populations, then, um, then you, can, um, you could see when is it that you have unique uniqueness of this Nash equilibrium, completely from, a, from this word of equilibrium, completely from a static perspective. And uh, that depends on the topology of the graph and on the structure of the delay functions. Uh, there is this uh, yeah, very technical, interesting word, Milchak, Milchak, I can't pronounce his name, um, from 15 years ago, showing that the, the word drop are essentially unique um, if um, uh, for every possible uh, choice of delay function on graphs that uh, he calls nearly parallel, which are essentially concatenations of the five uh, structures that you see here. Okay, so if you have a graph that is the concatenation of uh, arbitrary series concatenation of these ones, then uh, the, the word of equilibrium is unique. But if you have a graph already like this, then the wardrobe equilibrium are not unique. And in this particular case, I've, uh, we've done the, 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 we have just worked out the math. There are three different equilibria. And two of them are a strict equilibria, the first two that are listed here. So in this case, there are, uh, <coughs> this is a problem where there are um, uh, two populations and, um, these two populations um, should choose between different paths. In, uh, in the first two cases, the two populations choose, sorry, there are three populations, P equal to one, two, and three. And in the first two equilibria that are listed here, the projections of those two equilibria, essentially the, the, the three populations deterministically choose one path each. And this is how you get this part. And this, uh, because those parts, they give strictly the, 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 best, um, the best cost for all of them. But there's also a third equilibrium that is not strict. 
uh, and it's a mixed equilibrium where essentially all the populations split in a particular way. Okay, I'll get back to this example in a second. So what is it that uh, we're interested in here? We would like to see what happens when you study the, the same dynamics as before, or actually even a simplified version of the dynamics as before, where for a second we uh, neglect the physical dynamics. We assume that that physical dynamics is uh, equilibrated, but we just look at the dynamics on the um, level of path preferences. So we look at the so-called logit evolutionary dynamics for those games. Here, you see I'm using the same um, function logit response that I was using earlier, except that, of course, I have several populations, so I have to account for that. But again, this expression, it's simply, it's simply a soft mean expression telling me that population P would prefer to minimize the, the perceived cost. And um, this preference is parameterized by this parameter beta that is an inverse of the noise level. Now, in the special case of heterogeneous potential games, but, uh, but this is only the case where the, 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 the um, costs differ by a constant, then you still get a global asymptotic stability result. But the question is what happens when, uh, in the general case, when you have non-potential heterogeneous games, and one conjecture could be that uh, on those graphs, the, the, the uh, Milchaik uh, nearly parallel graphs, where you had uniqueness, were there, you might expect that uh, you would get global asymptotic stability, like in the homogeneous case. Whereas in other cases like this, uh, the, the, the uh, situation is more open. So our results in this field are um, as follow. So there is a class of uh, graphs for which, regardless of the uh, heterogeneous delay functions, we can prove uh, global asymptotic stability. And this class is um, not as large as the nearly parallel graphs, but it's the class of series of parallel graphs that it's a subclass of the previous one. So what is a... Uh, uh, parallel graph. It's a graph like the one that I'm showing here. It's essentially, it's called parallel if every link belongs to one route only. And then you can study a series of this concatenation of these graphs where you put them in series in an arbitrary way. And this is a series parallel graph. It's a, it's a class that has been studied by others also in this um, traffic problems. And for this class, uh, we have uh, a simple result that says that the, the, the logic dynamics is globally asymptotically stable, regardless of the heterogeneous um, uh, path preferences that the agents might have. In particular, there is a globally asymptotically stable equilibrium for any value of the, um, of the noise parameter beta. And uh, there is exponential convergence. In fact, it's exponentially stable. And this, uh, this, this uh, fixed point of this dynamics, it's gonna depend on beta, but as beta goes to plus infinity, this, so as the noise vanishes, this um, globally synthetically stable approaches the set of world drop equilibrium, or its projection converges to the unique world drop equilibrium. So that works for this class and um, since you don't have a potential, it's, it's technically the proof is completely uh, different. It's, it's, a, it's a contraction uh, argument in the L1 distance, but that leads to global uh, exponential convergence. Now, uh, the conjecture is that that uh, could be extended to nearly parallel graphs, which are more general than parallel graphs, but um, we don't have a proof for that because the, the contractivity uh, goes down, although uh, all simulations suggest that that should be. Now, let's see what happens on non-nearly non parallel graphs. So those are the cases where you have multiple world of equilibrium. And so here the dynamics can be expected to have a, an even richer behavior. And in fact, here is uh, a bunch of simulations on the example that I was showing you before. And probably the best plot is this one. And what you observe here is that 
if you look at the inverse noise level uh, beta and you plot it against uh, the, 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 uh, the state space, so if you make a bifurcation diagram, then you do, ex you do observe uh, a bifurcation arising. What you do observe is that for low noise, uh, for high noise, you get a globally asymptotically stable equilibrium. Whereas for a low noise regime, you have three equilibria, and these three equilibria, uh, these three fixed points, let's call them, they do converge to the wardrobe. Two of them, at least, they do converge to the wardrobe equilibrium. And this wardrobe equilibrium, the two strict ones, um, to the two strict one equilibrium, they converge to uh, asymptotically stable. Uh, fixed points, whereas to the unstable, to the, the non-strict one, there is an unstable equilibrium that converges to it. Okay, so the, the, the main results that we have in this field are sort of a, a formalization of this bifurcation um, that could occur. And um, the, uh, the, the, the first result, it's a, it's a theorem about um, fixed points of this logic dynamics in heterogeneous games on arbitrary graphs with arbitrary delays. If, um, if we look at the set of fixed points of the logit, uh, this is gonna depend on the parameter, the inverse parameter beta. As beta goes to infinity, this set uh, converges in, um, in the proper sense, to a uh, non-empty compact set that um, includes some of the wardrobe equilibria, but uh, not all. And uh, so it's a subset of the uh, wardrobe equilibria that you recover in this limit. And uh, those uh, that you do recover are the strict wardrobe equilibria plus possibly others that are um, also wardrobe equilibria, but uh, not strict. Okay, we call them, um, we have a characterization of what you, you get in the limit, but uh, it's, it's something that is a little bit broader than strict equilibria, but less than all equilibria. Not only you can prove that, but you can also prove that uh, all the strict equilibria are going to be locally symptotically stable in for uh, small enough noise. And uh, the, uh, we have also some conjectures that, um, uh, that uh, generalize this result, and uh, this in particular that every connected component of the world of equilibria should admit one and only one limit equilibrium. Finally, um, this is what happens in the small noise regime. As I told you, you converge to the strict Nash equilibria that locally is synthetically stable. For high noise, uh, you can prove exactly what you observe in the simulations, uh, which is that you have a globally asymptotically stable equilibrium because this, um, this is essentially when the, the, the effect of the heterogeneities vanishes because of the noise, and then essentially you end up in the previous, uh, in the previous case. Okay, as, um, so I think I'll... Um, this is what I wanted to say on these two problems. I'll just maybe spend a couple of minutes on this uh, third work, uh, just to give you the, the highlights. Uh, as I told you, uh, we, this um, interventions that I discussed in the very first part were interventions in consisting of tolls. There are other interventions that you could do, which could correspond to um, something that you don't do online, but you do offline, which would be uh, improvements on the on the infrastructure, something that you would do offline and you would like to plan. And we have a nice theory of uh, what you would get in the homogeneous case, how you would design an optimal intervention in that case. And I'll uh, refer you to the paper, but the... Um, interesting uh, result that we have is that we can relate this problem to a, um, an electrical network, uh, a DC electrical network uh, uh, problem. And we can get both uh, some insights and some algorithms which allow to approximate the, the solution of, of this problem. I'll, um, 
let me wrap up though. The, the two uh, main problems uh, that I discussed, the first one was dynamic pricing in multi-scale dynamic flow networks. We, uh, I proved it, it uh, showed you that uh, for this two time scale model, we have, uh, you can achieve global stability and optimality with fully decentralized um, feedback pricing. And I showed you some uh, um, simulations when I think the interesting behavior was the one with respect to information delays. And um, for that, we have no proofs, although, uh, uh, although they seem to be a very interesting uh, behavior. We didn't consider heterogeneities in that case, but just in the second, in the second case. But one could expect that the two uh, could be merged. And um, <clears throat> Of course, uh, practically, how to exert this influence uh, if it's a pricing or if it's a manipulation of the available information, that's an interesting question that um, how to implement these um, incentives. And on the second part, uh, for the evolutionary dynamics, here we focus on the heterogeneities of the uh, preferences. We were able to prove um, global exponential instability for some uh, simple graphs, but uh, for the general case, we were able to prove that at least in the small noise regime, you do converge to the set of strict water equilibria. And uh, from other reasons, we know that you might have several of the strict equilibria. And in this case, you observe this bifurcations because uh, on, the op on the other hand, for uh, large noise, you have a single um, uh, a single global asymptotically stable equilibrium i'll stop here and uh, i'm happy to take any questions thank you very much Giacomo, for the great talk um let's open the stage for questions so you can post it in the chat or simply unmute yourself and ask thank you Giacomo. very interesting work as usual uh, <laughs> brought me back to the good old days um, you know, some of this. Um, now, uh, I have a question about the, um, uh, so at some point you, you made, um, you, you showed a graph where you're essentially saying that you can you know, like use static, um, you know, gains, prices, or, yes. or you know, adapt it. Um, and the time scale doesn't really matter, right? But um, that is in the case where the network structure is in some sense fixed, right? So maybe it's an unknown, but fixed, or maybe there is a step change in the network structure. Is that the case? No, here I was just, yeah. Um, I was thinking the network is, is, is there and I was assumed that the network was, was static. Okay, of course, it's not like that. And of course you don't know it, but what I was to say is that even if you knew it and if it was really static and you could pre-compute everything, uh -huh. Okay, which is of course non robust yeah. and, and yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, still the feedback uh, tolls work better. Right, in right, the right, sense right, that right. they converge faster to, to the desired right. equilibrium. Of course, they don't suffer from the, uh, mm -hmm. if they are static, they don't suffer from information delays. So right. the only criticality of, the, of this feedback. Uh, it's that, well, as usual, when you introduce one feed, more feedback loop, you can. Uh, Create uh, cycles, especially right. if you have delays. So it's not, it's not surprising. What, what I had in mind is how do the time scales, you know, for in your adaptation, right? So in your feedback, interact with potential uh, time varying disturbances in a sense. You know, so for example, think of weather induced capacity changes, right? Um, uh, you know, it's raining, right? And then cars need to go yes. slower in certain parts of the city, right? So then how would the adaptation work in, in that case, right? So is there a coupling between the time scales of the disturbances and of your reaction? You're thinking with tolls, right? With the dynamic tolls. Right, right, with tolls, yeah. Without. Um, yeah, the tolls. No, the result, okay, I mean, analytically, let, let's say this, the, the, the result would tell you it, it's asymptotic. So 
it would tell you in the if you had this change and uh, then you would converge asymptotically so if you if you have a step change and you move from right so, 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 right, so but but then, not, then, then you would converge but how fast of course this is going to depend right, right, right. on how fast right, right, right. this eta parameter here and um, but it's going to depend i mean from simulation you see that it's not going to depend in a it's mm. going to depend the way you would expect so it rescales like the right. inverse of the theta yeah um you know and this and the stability for for step changes right but then you can also think of you know yeah <laughs> sure. how yeah. you amplify disturbances for non-step changes you know something like uh, you know this Absolutely. kind of like, uh, like the weather or you know something that comes on and off or maybe there is a there is an event in some location in the city um you know things like that because uh, i was also thinking that usually the objection um that you hear from authorities right so when you want to implement these kind of things is that they don't like the idea they don't really like the dynamic pricing right in a sense right so they they like the fact that um uh, users know how much they will pay ahead of time right so when they make the decision to take the car for example right so how do you you know, how do you sell the idea, right? So I, I don't know if you ever talked to some, you know, traffic authorities or um, uh, the kind of people, you know, how, did, how can you sell this idea of a feedback toll? Um, no, you're making a, an excellent point. Um, practically, uh, well, you, you know, there's very few places, right, where this dynamic toll is doing, and typically it's... Um, it's a quantized uh, version of it of course you have two or three levels and then you you, you adapt to to it well, you know but, where where are they doing this in italy where are they doing this uh i know in israel for sure they do it yeah, oh in israel okay no i thought that you said in italy no in italy i haven't seen it and i don't think so mm -hmm. uh, i guess in the us too right they were doing it at least in california in some places but very very simple i mean two prices and Mm -hmm. In um, in Israel, I knew that they had some. Uh, it was something. What is it? There was a preferred lane uh, on the highway that you could use, and the price for that would change dynamically. And they had designed some feedback, uh, not not based on this, but some PID feedback that that was doing something. But um, <clears throat> no, you're right. How fast? Um, in a sense if you if the time scale is smaller the the, the is lower then um uh, you don't you get fewer oscillations so the, the convergence is smoother but of course then you're slowing down uh, the, the the performance so then i mean you will achieve optimality but at a much slower pace but uh that's what you could say but then practically how would you implement it um it's also that um i mean if you think that the information is flowing through the app uh, if the different apps would tell you different suggestions and if somehow the suggestions would um account for the stalls then um, or you know account for the stalls then then you could try to use that but i don't know i haven't thought of, um, uh, i don't have i haven't talked to 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 practical people let's say on this <laughs> yes. okay uh, yeah okay so i know that you had to go uh, i don't know if somebody else has uh, questions Maybe I have a short one. Um, here we you are discussing the pricing policies. And my question goes more in the direction, actually this could be applied to any label of the graph that somehow relates with the preferences of the, of the users, right? Uh, I mean, price is not the only thing you could set like a capacity of the road or uh, other properties of the road that influence the choice. 
uh, based on the preference structure. Yes. Have you, look, have you looked at other other properties that you could change? Like for instance, I was thinking about congestion um, congestion regulation via capacity constraints that adapt over time or these kind of things. Yeah, I was not okay. So at this level, I was not um, even assuming that they knew the capacities, or uh, I was assuming that everything the the drivers were were looking at was this travel time or or the total cost. So okay. of course you can try to to change capacities dynamically, and um, uh, you could. Um, I think we have studied something uh, that, that tackled that also uh, in some way with, with Emilio and then following works. At, the, at that point, you, you look at the physical dynamics too, yes. right, directly. And there, um, if, you're, um, if you make these changes, uh, you could design controllers that are local and make these changes in a in a reasonably smart way that uh, are optimal. Uh, there I'm talking about the physical dynamics uh, by itself without decoupling with the decision. decision. So in this coupling here, you have a, a distributed part that is the physical part, but then the decision is um, the, 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 uh, the tolls are local, but um, we are assuming that drivers have the, the global information on their um, apps. Okay, I see. So, but yes, you can make other changes. Uh, the, the, the thing we didn't discuss was uh, something related to that, uh, that I didn't discuss was something related to that, which was the um, interventions. And there, uh, it was thought of as an offline intervention. And um, it, you can think of it as a capacity um, increase in some roads. Okay, so the problem was, let's say you can increase the capacity on some roads and you pay a price for that. What is the, the best intervention that you could do? Uh, this was just an equilibrium analysis because you could do it um, without. And uh, so we, we had some <clears throat> analysis related to that I'm happy to discuss. Uh, but, so answer, short answer is it depends on what your um, objective is if you want to do it dynamically and you're looking at the physical dynamics or if you want to do it uh, statically offline as a as an infrastructure intervention and then uh, a static analysis would go for you yes makes sense thank you very much very interesting sure um i guess in the interest of time we are going to delay any further question to your email if you guys in the audience have questions i guess can reach out to Giacomo for deeper discussions. Thank you very much again uh, for, your, for your talk and uh, good luck for the next uh, steps. Thank you. And thank you. Thanks, Emilio. And thank thanks you. To thank you, Giacomo. Good to see you again. Good thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. See you all next week. Bye-bye.